Hey everybody, wanted to put together a quick little video on how I've got APRS working to uh, Android using the FTM 400 and a Bluetooth serial interface. So the uh, the phone that you're seeing, it's not connected to uh, the network, it's not on the cell network, it's not on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth is off. So I just wanted to see if I could get some offline mapping. Um, ideally, I'd like to put this as a, on a tablet, maybe have that on the dashboard with the radio as a, as a mobile. Uh, but I just wanted to give you guys a, a rundown of what it took to make this actually work. So, uh, starting with our, our favorite FTM 400 radio, uh, using the APRS modem. I'm going to turn the volume down. I don't hear it squeaking. Uh, the IO gear, this is a GBC-232A. Uh, it's a uh, serial to Bluetooth adapter. It was about 45 bucks on Amazon. There are a number that will work. Um, this was the first one I happened to grab. It's not, it was difficult to configure. It was 19 KBOD out of the box and I couldn't figure out how to change that easily. So um, in the FTM 400, it's just a matter of setting the COM port uh, to 19.2 uh, to whatever speed will match your Bluetooth adapter as well as setting the output to packet. And that is it from the radio side. And on the phone, uh, that was my big accomplishment was getting a map. Uh, all the waypoints you're seeing are actual waypoints uh, received by the 400, sent over Bluetooth into uh, the APRS Droid application. Um, a couple things to note. This is not your um, App Store version of APRS Droid Map. This is the OSM, OpenStreetMap version. I'll provide a link to that. And the hook is that you need to download your own maps. Um, I will post a link to a site that has plenty of maps available. Um, you can download whatever areas you're going to be in. I am running a really old phone. Uh, this is my original Droid phone uh, that, that you're seeing here. So uh, it's really slow. I'm running a small map of Arizona and New Mexico at the time. Um, and you can see if you go too far to the west, if you go to California, you, you fall off the map in more ways than one. Uh, but it's a you know detailed map. Everything's there. Um, you can click on a point. You can click on a, a station to get information. Uh, here's a weather station. Um, it took me a little bit to, to figure out how to actually read these, but uh, for the weather station, uh, 178 is the wind direction. Wind speed of 3, gusts of 9 miles an hour, temperatures 36 Fahrenheit. Rain or a precipitation of 0 in the past hour, past day, past 24 hours. Maybe I had those backwards. Uh, humidity of 53%. Uh, barometric perfect barometric pressure of uh, 120, 1021.7 millibar. But um, the APRS Droid app seems to be working pretty well. There's the hub view, which shows you the most recent packet from each of the stations. Uh, one thing to note, because the phone GPS is not enabled, uh, these distances are all coming up as 11 or 12,000 kilometers. So this is incorrect. If I put the GPS on in the phone, it'll work just fine. Uh, so uh, just for the sake of the video, I just, just started with nothing. Um, and then back to the uh, screen where you can actually see each packet come rolling in. Uh, bump up the volume on the APRS. Hopefully we've got a packet come popping in here. There we go. Just see the, uh, there we go. Double header two just popped in. So, so just a quick little bit about the setup for, for this, uh, on the phone. So in the uh, APRS droid preferences, you are going to want to select Kenwood. Um, wherever my focus disappeared to. Okay. You Kenwood. And let me drill into that just to go through the details here. Um, so Kenwood is going to be uh, used with the, the Bluetooth SPP connection. Uh, after you initially pair your Bluetooth dongle with the phone, 
Uh, you're going to be able to have to come in here and say TNC Bluetooth device, and then you're going to pick pick it from the list. In this case, I've already got it selected, so uh, that lets APRS Droid know what interface to use for the incoming data. Um, the other thing you're going to need to set is the map file name. I mentioned earlier you're going to have to download a map, so download a map, put it somewhere, and use this area to tell it what map you're using. And if you're driving and you happen to cross from one map to the other, uh, you can pop in here and just change that to the new map of your of your new area. Um, as I said, there are ways to make your own maps. Um, it's well beyond the scope of this quickie video, so um, I encourage you to go check that out. And if you could figure it out, let me know how you did it. Um, there's also one here for the theme file name. So I would really recommend not monkeying with that. Just just leave that blank as a factory default because if you, if you mess that up, you're not going to have any map visible at all. And really the big challenge here was getting the map visible. So, um, so anyway, that's, that's my take on it. I, I spent a couple days trying to get this all to work and I'm, I'm really thrilled with how this came together. So I'm thinking about picking up, uh, maybe a nine or 10 inch tablet and trying to mount that on the dash and run this, uh, offline mapping application just have with me. So anyway, hope it's been informative. Good luck, 7-3.